All right, everybody, welcome back to the ZHP Garage, and we are currently in the master mechanic's favorite place on earth. I hate this place. So if you would like to... <laughs> Getting his window clean here, coast to coast. Coast to coast. So we are currently in Atalanto, oh, California. Place. His favorite place. Favorite place. place. I hate this place. It's your favorite place. I hate this place. His favorite place. So we're going to get on the road and explain a little bit later about what we got going on in this video. And as you can tell by the title, you already know what's going on in this video, but... We're going to explain more as we go. Alright everyone, we made it to the Master Mechanic's favorite place. Second favorite place, other than Atalanto. Oh, man. We're here in Reno, Nevada. I think, I think, I think we need to go back. He's freezing right now. It's 50 degrees outside. He said he's used to the San Diego weather. He showed it to me. I bought it sight unseen. One of our friends uh, went and looked at it and bought it for us. So we're gonna go and check it out. It's pretty rough, like they always are. So we're gonna go check it out. Do some work to it. I haven't even seen it yet. So let's hope it's not too bad. It is, it's bad. Let's hope. <clears throat> it's that bad. Let's hope. Let's go see. Let's go see what Come what's on, going go. on here. On, let's let's go. go. All right, we are pulling up now. What did you get us into? What did I get us into? <laughs> Look at this clean one owner. Looks pretty good from afar, but hold on. I don't think it's far from good. There's something like that. Some some some. Looks good from far, but far from good. All right, so here it is, right here. We're gonna walk around with the master mechanic right now. But the reason this is so big, being a 1975, is because if you guys don't know, in California, the smog, you don't have to smog 75 and older. So for square bodies, 73 to 75 are the years. So that's the reason I bought this side on scene, because it was a 75. But regardless, it's still in pretty rough shape. We're gonna walk around it right now. The Master Mechanics is gonna show us what's going on. So let's see what's up. Got our race truck here. Got the headlights taped out so we can hit the autocross. Wheels aren't too bad. Wheels are pretty decent. A little rough though. Missing the emblems and mirrors. Got some got some battle scars. So this truck, this truck is just a single gas tank. Single gas tank model. A little, little strippy down. Missing the rear bumper. We're gonna throw this in the trash. This thing's we don't like it. This is stupid. This is going in the trash. For some reason, we got an extra header. We're gonna have to see about getting some different set of headers. It's a classic vehicle though, so it's alright. Okay, had a little accident right here. Not too bad though for the year, I mean for the truck. It's like I got shot at once. Check out this clean interior though. Most of the dash parts, I put it back together. Looks like there's an issue with the ignition switch. Nobody's home. So you have to fix that. Get rid of the vice grips. Put a window crank back on it. Let's check out this horsepower. Typical billing wire, single return spring here. Valve cover on upside down, you know, basic stuff, basic small block. So we got one tri y style header on this side that if you can see down in there is aiming directly at the cross member, so it's not gonna work out. And then we got, I think the one in the bed matches this one, but both flanges are cut. These headers are just, there's no exhaust on it. All there is is headers. We're gonna have to do a full, full exhaust before we can drive this thing. We're gonna drive this thing back to San Diego. We're gonna take care of this oil leak on the intake. We're gonna reseal the intake, the valve covers. Put the valve cover on the right way. Gonna check the top dead center, set the timing, get that all plug wires ran right. We gotta start with with the exhaust. So we're gonna run to Summit. We're gonna get some pieces for the exhaust system. We're gonna get this thing quiet. So the good thing about being in Reno, Nevada, as it is one of the three locations in the United States that has Summit Racing. So it's gonna be really convenient to be running back and forth to fix this thing up right now. If you have ever been Inside the Summit store, they have a demo shelf, which which is like Nick, dent, dented, returned items. You can get for really cheap, and they have a lot of small block parts. So I'm hoping to score a set of demo mufflers, maybe a set of headers. All right, here is Summit in all its glory. If you guys have never seen it before, come on, let's go, let's go shopping. All right, so we got our we got our parts here. We didn't we didn't luck out on the demo shelf. We had to get new, but we got a set of headers, some summit mufflers. Can't remember what brand exhaust, intake gaskets, valve cover, some dipsticks, return spring, 
Time to go do some work. We got we didn't plan very well on where we're gonna put it at, so we gotta cram in this little car. Well, we uh, kind of ran out of room, so we're gonna have to drive back like this. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. It's close by. <laughs> so we gotta go. I'm telling you, man, there's never, never a dull moment. <laughs> never. I'll, I'll hold the door. Just gotta give a little. There we go. Okay. So you comfortable right now? Oh, this is good. We're good. Cruising down the street, no biggie, nothing to see here, sir. All right, so we got back over to where the truck was. Got it fired up, so I will show you that right now. Hey, don't laugh, it's paid for. Let's <laughs> go put exhaust on this thing, huh? Hold on, hold on, yeah, close the door. Okay, we're good now, let's go. Well, as you can tell, it's a uh, it's a clean one owner. You know, it's it's uh, needs some work. So we're gonna go over and put the exhaust on it, get it sounding better, getting sounding more quiet, and then we're gonna deal with all the other odds and ends that need to be fixed on it. So we're able to drive it back to San Diego. Oh, need some love for sure. But well, we gotta start with this exhaust. So good old good old Kevin, let me use his garage and his welder. So we're gonna we're gonna build this exhaust for this thing. So we got a new set of headers and everything because the headers that are on it. I'll show you in a second. But there's no flanges. They're all they're all horrible. So we just got some some painted painted black summit summit headers. We got flanges on them now. And then it also comes with the reducers. And we're just doing we're just doing a two and a quarter exhaust. So we got the gaskets for the collectors. It's got the flanges. It's got it's got the bolts. And it's got it's got everything you need. It's got instructions in case you don't know how to put headers on. And then the exhaust we're going to be running. Oh, sorry. It even came with gaskets. It's got everything. And another reason why we changed the headers is you, we'll show you once we get that one off, but this one is shorter. The one that's on it now is a little bit longer and it's aiming right at the cross member. These are actually designed for this truck so they'll, they'll fit properly. And then for the exhaust, this fine dual exhaust pipe kit. It's in here somewhere, which is pretty much just some pieces. So you lay it out, aluminized piping. It has a tailpipe, so it goes all the way out the back. So watch out for Kevin's Camaro. Woo! Real beast. All right, so pretty much, so you have your headers. This is the passenger side. Probably gonna be this one, because you're gonna drog around the cross member. Then you're gonna have your muffler. Then we'll probably have your muffler around here. Then depending if it's a long bed or a short bed, probably determine these extender pipes. This is probably your tailpipe. What I would guess. We're gonna get the old headers off of it, and then we'll get the new ones on, go from there. So I got the, the headers off, so like I was saying, I have three. This is the one that was, wasn't on it. This one was on the driver's side. tri -Y was on the, on the passenger side. So these two look like they're a matching set, but you see the flanges are all, I don't know what's going on here. Here's the ones we got. So it looked like they're actually, might be the right header, other than the flanges were gone. Well, this one's the right header. This one that was on there wasn't. You see it's way, way longer, so it just went closer to the cross member. But you can see on these headers here that it's got a pretty good oil leak. Looks like it's coming mostly from the valve cover, the valve cover gaskets. So if you come look at this thing, you can see all down the side here, it's all wet. We got new valve cover gaskets, so now that the manifolds are off, I'm gonna clean this, or the, the headers are off, I'm gonna clean this up here. I'm gonna take the valve covers off. The intake looks okay. I'm gonna run it for now. I think it'll get us back. Just trying to save time, get, get back on the road. On the passenger side here also, same thing. So now that I have both headers off, I'm gonna clean this up, replace the gaskets, actually put the valve cover on the right way. I'll show it to you after we get the valve cover, or after the valve covers, gaskets on, and the new headers on. All right, so just give you guys a little, little update what's going on here. We got the headers on it, the plug wire's back on it. We still need to do some sort of something to hold them. We changed the dipstick, because it had this crazy contraption in there for the dipstick, and I'm pretty sure this is for a passenger side dipstick, not a driver's side. Got the valve cover gaskets changed. We changed um, the return spring. It just bent the bracket over a little bit to get it the right angle. This one was already on there. So we have a dual now, so we got that straightened out. Then you can see over on the passenger side here, we did that valve cover also. Flipped it around like it's supposed to be, PCV valve in the back. So we changed the configuration of the vacuum lines a little bit. We shortened up the one for the booster. And then also, same thing, we need to still do something to hold Plug wires out of the way. The choke wire was wound up here in the linkage and it kind of chewed it up a little bit. So I can put some tape or something on there, run it out of the way. So still gonna clean that up. But now that we got the headers on it, both sides, 
I'm gonna start doing the exhaust. I wanna get the exhaust on it so I can fire it up, check the timing, see if the engine is even mechanically sound enough to drive that far. It was so loud before, I don't even know if it has a rod knock or, but now I'm gonna do the exhaust and you can see that I'm gonna save myself some time. It came with clamps. So I'm just gonna clamp it where I can, but if I have to, I, I can weld it. I have the option of a welder here. So now I'm gonna bolt the collectors on it with the gasket and I'm gonna start laying, laying out the exhaust. I'll show, you, I'll show you before what it looks like and then we'll show you after once we get the exhaust going on there. So I'm bolting these reducers on here. It's got a gasket, collector gasket that goes in here and this reducer kind of got a little give, a little leeway. So you kind of need to use the bolts to line everything up. If I do these collectors, it doesn't really matter on this thing, but on a car, you don't want to have the high spot, like single one down. I normally turn them so that they're flat, give you a little more ground clearance, but on a big old truck, it doesn't matter. But once you get all the bolts in here, it centers up the reducer. Same thing on the other side, but you see when they ship these, they put this little plastic, like one of these little plastic clip in there, collector from bouncing around in the box. So you gotta get those out. I'll use my hammer. Knock it out of there. Side's definitely tighter with that drive line right there. Can't wait to see how that exhaust is gonna go around it. Well, it's already heading behind the drive line, so it's probably gonna come back or underneath. Oh, it probably goes underneath. I think it goes underneath. Probably with the 20 foot of clearance goes underneath. Now I'm used to automobiles with no ground clearance, not too bad. It's hitting the parking brake cable a little bit. But this one here, it's all cattywampus. I don't think it's supposed to hang like that. That way it puts it out too far. So the angle right here is off. So we're gonna have to do some cutting. So I changed my mind again. I decided I'm gonna weld it. So I marked it where I want the muffler to be on here. So I'm gonna weld this, put it back on, do the next piece. You see, I drew a line both ways because you can get the pipe in or out more. So I wanna make sure it wasn't in too far or out too far. And then you can see it's kinda of got slop in the muffler. So I just wanna split the difference, and get it get it straight on the on the exhaust pipe. So now I'm gonna fire up the kilo, kilo welder here. Now we got a tack, gonna weld it up. All right, there you go. There you go, we got that guy. Now we're gonna move on. Let's go see where the next piece is gonna be. So now the next one is the extender for a long bed. That's what we have here is a long bed. So now we need to determine where those are gonna be. We'll probably weld it here first and then in here second. So this is the one I just welded. We got this, we got after the muffler and this one over here marked. And then we're gonna cut this bend off is not working right here. So we're gonna cut it right here after we weld these two. So now I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this held and then get it centered up. So it winds up being where I was holding it at. Then we're gonna weld it up. Ah, oh, keep thinking this is auto dark. All right, so now we gotta flip it that way. And we gotta line this one up here. It's pretty tight, it doesn't have much slop. We're gonna go ahead and go for it. So now we got it welded. Now we're gonna put it in the chop saw. And we're gonna cut it right here straight because this angle wasn't working out in the truck. So we're just gonna have it go up and over the rear end for right now. And it's just gonna go at the ground and we're gonna finish it up later when we get home. So this is just kinda, it's like a rough, it's not quite done. So we're just trying to get the exhaust over the rear end and then we'll put the tailpipes on it after we get home. We're a little limited on our tooling. So we're just gonna use a little sandy disc and I'm just gonna knock the burrs. I forgot to bring the file that I normally use on the inside. So I'm just gonna uh, clean up the outside. When it's in the truck, it's aiming down. So once we get back, I can clean it up in the truck and finish running it out, either out the side or out the back. So I'm just gonna clean up the outside of the thre uh, threads, outside of the pipe with a little sandy disc. So there you have it. There's the driver's side. So now we need to figure out the placement of the hangers, which you can see here, it's got a couple hangers. Got a hanger here, hanger here. So we'll finish it up. I don't know if we'll leave it like that or if we'll wind up going straight out the back, probably out the side if anything. So now we need to figure out a hanger. So let me grab a hanger. I don't know if I, if I told you, this is a um, Flowtech exhaust kit, all these parts. So it came with clamps that you can clamp it, but we wound up welding it but what we're gonna do is use one of the clamps and a hanger, it comes with these hangers, it comes with four of them. So since it has the hangers that I showed you underneath the truck, I'm gonna use a hanger that comes with the kit 
I'm gonna put a clamp on it just to hold it for right now until I get it up here. But I'll probably leave the clamp on it in general, but I'm gonna put a couple tacks, but I'm gonna put this on the pipe and then I'm gonna run a bolt through the two, this hanger and that hanger to hold. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna pull it, I move this out of the way because the little welder can't go that far where it's at now. I'm gonna pull it up here and I'm gonna weld the front of the exhaust and then I'm gonna pull it back out so I have room to work to start the passenger side. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Get it tuned up. I guess the exhaust done. So it's been a little bit, about, I don't know, two, three hours. It kind of, it beat me up, man. It beat me up. It was some work. The exhaust fought me. But we got it, we got it, uh, got it tuned up. We adjusted the timing just a little bit by ear. Adjusted the carburetor. Sound, sounds good, though. Sounds good with the exhaust. You can see the passenger side here just, just trash me it wasn't wasn't fitting like it was anticipated angle of the headers and everything so i had to put i had to take the pieces that were supposed to be the tailpipes and use them over here clear the gas tank but it turned out really good though it's only two it's a two and a quarter exhaust dual it's not 100 percent done yet i'm probably gonna add a crossover and you can see on the tailpipes tailpipes aren't really done yet one side comes down a little bit further than this side i was gonna stop it up there but then i decided to kick it down so we need to finish the tailpipes but you see the mufflers Tucked up out of the way, got two hangers on it, so it holds them evenly. The driver's side turned out way easier. It pretty much went on like, like it's supposed to. But he goes over the top of the cross members, so it's a little more tucked up. It's a straighter shot, it's a lot easier. Check it out, let me start it up. It may smoke a little bit because the whole exhaust is full of like, oils and stuff. How do you start it? Show me how you do it. Use a pair of pliers. Still in front needs some adjustment, but we're going down to sea level, so it'll probably be all right. But runs good. We're gonna see if we can make the journey. Come, come tag along. See if we can make it back. All right. It is the next day. We were really trashed yesterday after doing that truck, um, doing the exhaust on it. So we just got out of the hotel right here, and we are going to hit the road in our 75 square body that is now ready to run. Um, we drove it about 30 minutes to the hotel here and it did about 2,500 RPMs in third gear because it's only a three speed. So it did about 2,500 RPMs at roughly 75 miles an hour, 70 to 75 miles an hour in that range. So it should be able to cruise home very well. It was okay, other than the tires are a little cupped, a little square, but it drove pretty good though, not too bad. So it should make it back all right. It's kind of hard to tell about noise because it had the windows down and just all the wind noise and tire noise, just noise. So but the engine sounds good though. It runs good, it's got good power. So yeah, we're gonna get in it, we're gonna get driving. Get Head back, hopefully no problems. First we're gonna go get some breakfast and then we're gonna start driving home. Let's go. Okay, so we got a big dilemma here. Little dilemma. We got a dilemma. We had our first little mishap. <laughs> this little mishap. Good old GM senders. We thought we had this thing plumb full yesterday. Either it wasn't full or it uses a lot of gas. Have ran out. <laughs> ran out of gas. It's been about what? 100 miles? Yeah, right around 100 miles, a little over. So it's a 20 gallon tank. We filled it up. It kept throwing up. It kept throwing up and it read full, but the gauge reads everything. So Yeah. So we don't know if it was full or if it wasn't full. So we're gonna have to take this good old car, chase vehicle, drive to the gas station, get a gas can somewhere, because we don't have a gas can on us. Do we have a gas we don't have a gas can, do we? Yeah. So we're gonna have to get a gas can. We got water. Fill the yeah, we have water for just in case the radiator leaked. But we have no gas can, so we're gonna have to find a gas can, fill up that gas, fill this thing up, and then drive this to the gas station, fill it up, and then we can keep on going down the road. So the master mechanic here is gonna be the master gas gas getter. It's not so bad. If it's only running out of gas, that's at least that's an easy fix. We'll go get gas. I'm gonna go get some gas. He's gonna go get some gas right now, and I'm gonna stand here and I'll people watch. Watch people driving by on the road.
All right, sir. We got we got backup. Well, how's this gonna work going on the side like this? <laughs> you gonna help or you gonna stand there? All right, we got gas in it. Gas tanks in California are amazing. Just remember that. We're gonna keep driving on now. I guess we're just gonna have to keep filling this up quite often so we don't run out of gas until we figure out what's going on. So let's go right now. Okay, so I guess we weren't just out of gas. There's an issue going on with the carburetor and it's flooding the carburetor with gas. So we're gonna take a look at it right now. It's actually really nice right here. We stopped about 11 miles away from Yosemite National Park. So it's not too bad right here. What are you doing right now? Well, we got um, our alternator and power steering belt kept squealing when you try to rev it real quick or turn the do a u-turn or something turn around so i'm tightening up the belt we have to take the top off this carburetor because i think when it ran out of gas i think we got some debris even though it has a filter on it into the needle and seat because we you slow down in speed and it starts flooding out you gotta put it in neutral really quick rev it up so i'm gonna take this top off and see if there's any debris in the needle and seat real quick blow your whistle <laughs> so we got the got the carburetor part got the needle and seats out it didn't seem like they had any debris in it, so floats look all right. It's only at idle though, it seems to load up. So we'll put it back together now, take care of this thing flooding when we go slow. I think it's flooding, it might be flooding where we're going too. That might be why it's using so much gas. We'll get it back together here and see what's going on with it. Fuel level's not too high. I don't know why it keeps choking out, but it straight floods the top of the carburetor, it's full of gas. So we got it back together. We're gonna fire it up now and see, see what it's doing. See if we need to tweak it a little bit. See if it's done, done flooding. Let's get this stuff off here so it won't fall. All right, let's go for it. Let's do it. Better? Seems like it's back to normal for right now. I had been good before it wasn't idle. It kept flooding and dying. And so I'll put the air cleaner back on it and get back on the road here. No more, no more bells squealing. We're good. We're on it. We're getting there. We're getting there, man. On to the next stop. Let's go. All right, it has been a few hours since that last clip of us driving. As you can obviously tell, it is nighttime. So it's about 9.30 right now. Um, we left where we picked up this truck, or at least where we stayed in the hotel, we left like at 9.30. So it's been, it's been a long trip so far. We're almost home. We're about two hours away from where we need to get to. And this thing has been ginormous pain in the butt with gas. It's been a pain in the butt with the coolant, the overheat, it's been, it hasn't really been overheating, it's just been losing coolant. We don't really know where it's going. Like, there's some in the overflow can, but at the same time, there's still some that isn't there that, you know, it's not in the overflow can. So, we don't know what's going on. What do you think's going on? I think it takes a long day. I think the radiator cap is not holding the coolant and it just keeps filling up the overflow and then the overflow overflows and then there's nowhere to go but on the ground. Between the tires and the wind noise and the stiff ride, it's time to be done driving this truck. Yeah, I didn't get much interior shots of me driving because it's like riding, riding a stinking bunking Bronco. You go over a bump and you're like going for a stinking joy ride. It's like you're on a roller coaster almost. Not a safe roller coaster by any means. So, I think we're gonna call it right here. We're gonna call it a trip. Hopefully we're gonna make it. We got about 90-ish miles, I think, to go. If anything crazy happens, I'll pull out their camera and record, but we don't expect anything crazy to happen. Well, we made it. We made it. I say we made it. I'd say, I'd say mission successful. Mission impossible made successful. <laughs> side on scene. I don't know about side on scene again. Yeah. Who, who thought that one up? I don't know. You're the one that showed me the truck. <laughs> All right, I'm out. Come, on, come back next All time. All right. We're going. Check out the other videos, and we'll see you guys next time.